I want to show you how Krita handles image sequences, how it imports them. This is an animated scene of a little smoke poof that I did for one of my LinkedIn Learning slash Linda tutorial courses. And it was to teach the principle of doing a simple animated smoke poof. What I want to show you is how we take this image sequence and bring it into Krita and how easy it is. We make sure that we have each frame down here set to 0.1 seconds. Just simplifies things. File, export render video. I'm using an old version of Adobe CS6 because I no longer trust the Creative Cloud applications. So whatever version you're using, if it works for you, that is fine. My render video settings that I'm using are here. Frame rate 10, 10 FPS, starting at one, two digits. Format Photoshop image sequence and it is PNG. The other thing that you might want to do is switch off on the first frame if you want to switch off the white. So you just export the line layer, that's fine. That will then export, let me close Photoshop, we don't need this anymore. I'm gonna go into Krita and make a new image with the same dimensions, 1920 by 1080. If you haven't seen Krita before, it's a fantastic program. It's free in some respects, not as good as Photoshop, but many more superior to it. And of course, there's no monthly subscription and they're less likely to blow up in your face. So let's import this file, import animation frames, and we have to find the images, add images. I am going to put this folder in the show notes below. So if you want to import these, you just simply do this, start at zero. And I think we can make that start at one, step one. And this will apply the drawing on the, the frames that we like. That way it skips the zero frame and we go right in with uh, the frames that we need here. I don't like doing anything on the zero frame in Krita because uh, it's confusing to have frame one on zero and frame two on one. That would wreck your head. We'll go to here, clip start on frame one. Uh, we're only working with 10 frames or 11. So let's make this 11. I think 11 covers it. Frame rate 24 FPS. And that trims the timeline to here. Now when I hit play, poof, 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 poof. I'm going to put this file as well in the notes below. What I'm going to do in the course of this movie is show you how I would proceed to clean this up. Because this is an effect scene and it's a very simple one, I'm going to do something that I wouldn't do for a more complex scene. I'm going to start on the first frame, go to the second, go to the third. And I'll show you the beginning of the process. You'll get the idea pretty quick how easy this is. We can go through these layers. We have our background layer, that's fine, padlock. I have a paint layer here that we don't need or I'll rename. Let's click that off for now. And then the imported image sequences here, Paint layer two. So let me click on that and call it rough. And I'm gonna make a cleanup layer. So let's drag that one here. If you don't know how to make a layer, this plus sign makes a new layer, really simple. So let's click that on. And sometimes it can be confusing when you're working with these layers. See how it's, this thing is popping on and off as I do this. If you look at the area down here, as I click on background rough, it's where is it going? You have to click that pin. And that's basically like the um, soloing layers in After Effects, where you click it and you can hide a layer. It can be very handy, but also it can make things seem to disappear on you. But you will need it at some point, but just know where that is. If I, want, if I want clean up to go away, I click on the pin. If I want to see it again, I click over here and pin it again. Not as elegant as I would like, but it works. Okay, so the rough layer, I only need that to be like a faded layer. Like we'll put a clean sheet of paper down on top. And we're going to draw on that. So you find a brush you like. I have my custom brush set. Again, I have a previous movie about this. So if you want these brushes, I, I recommend them. They're really good. Or you can find others in your default brushes here. So we click on the brush tool. We make sure that erase isn't on. I would set the opacity to something you like. I like it around 45. Helps to draw with a black color. The other thing I want to do is to convert this layer. If I start drawing now, blah, 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 and go to here, I've made one drawing and it's not animating, that's not good. So what I want to do is make a bunch of blanks here. Let's select the area I want to be uh, blank drawings and click this button. And now it's given me a bunch of blank drawings. Now on the first drawing, we start our sort of cleanup. How clean you go depends on your tastes. I happen to like something with a little roughness to it. You can mess around with brush settings. So this is certainly one way of doing it. And you see how I have these inner fills here. I'm not going to worry about them just yet. I'm just going to worry about the basic form. That's sort of like a shadow layer. So let's just get this thing working first. That's the second one. So now we can toggle from here to here. And if we want to get the other layer off, we simply switch it off there. And this is the process that we would use. I have one that's already finished. So I'm just going to show you some different approaches that I would use for this with different brushes. Maybe you don't like that look and you want to have something that's a little tighter. That is really tight. So let's go back here and make this brush bigger. 
that's super clean like if you're going for that roger rabbit richard williams thief and the cobbler look this would certainly be a, a way of doing it it's not bad it looks it has a certain kind of thick and thin to it very subtle but it's definitely there i could even make this thing bigger if i wanted to have slightly more uh, accentuated thick and thin one thing to watch out for when you do this kind of cleanup is uh, that actually looks really nice i'm kind of pleased with that that looks real if you know what i mean so one thing to watch out for when you do this kind of cleanup is don't make everything like the same line weight you want it to have natural variety it'll kind of come with any pressure sensitive tablet you won't be able to help making the lines varied it's also helpful sometimes if you have the dark area accentuate at the bottom if light's coming from above. Extreme subtlety, but it gives you the idea that we have a light source up here. And the converse of that, maybe you want to make lighter lines up there. This is the kind of thing that most people will never notice, but they'll feel. Very, very good cleanup artists will work at that level. I'm also not tracing strictly. I'm accentuating the rough. Don't ever think that you have to exactly trace the rough. You don't want to go too far off the rough that you begin to change the animation. That could be very bad. There are horror stories about those kind of scenes, animator scenes being ruined in the cleanup department when somebody decided to push it a little more. When I worked at the Bluth studio, um, <laughs> a bunch of wunderkinds came in from Sheridan College in Toronto and one of them thought that it would be a really good idea to re- I'm going to pick a different brush here- to uh, redraw the animator's keys. That that went well. That went as pretty much as well as you'd expect. I still remember that. That was pandemonium. Because that was basically the animator who would have spent maybe three weeks get to get that scene approved. And now some uh, wunderkind has come in and basically trashed it. So And we were, we were paid by footage too. So if you're an animator, you were paid by footage. So that could wreck your income. So when I make these lines, I'm trying to accentuate the rough, but not like changed like this. If this has been approved by the directors or the animator, you know, there's a certain leeway that you have, but there are limits as well. So you get the idea. I think I've done enough here to give you a sense of the process and how easy it is. Like it's, once we switch this layer off, I'll show you the two, the, the difference from those two line styles. Let me go back to here, switch off the rough layer. You know, different departments, different studios will have different looks. So in this case we have, I'm gonna go back to my original rough style because I just like it. You could also sort of combine them. You could take that line, make a new layer and have one of the, you know, very austere dark lines and sort of have a composite. What happens with the really dark line is it can look a bit sterile um, and you lose some of the vitality that you have in the original kind of looser look. So it's definitely possible with the magic of computers to um, have diff two different layers. Let me just do that, just to give you some options. And I would encourage you to look at screenshots from say the Jungle Book and see how rough the drawings often are uh, it's quite noticeable that they like getting a certain scratchiness with some of their work certainly in the rescuers and the really late late period stuff so now we would have the the rough line and then the more cleanup line and then when we combine them you kind of have the best of both creates more work of course because now you have two layers but you know what can you do so uh, i'm actually going to delete that just because that was a, a demonstration Let's see if we want to do uh, that internal color line. So we have these internal shades here and a couple of ways of doing that. Well, actually the way I recommend is just make a second layer with the brush tool, right click on this. Uh, let's see here, we go layer style, color overlay. Cause I, I want to be able to see this in a different color but not really have it in a different color. Make this normal, 100%, okay. And now when I draw here, it looks red, but if I switch off the effects here, it goes back to black. So really I'm drawing in black, but it allows me to create this inner line in a temporary red color. And I call it color sep. That's a color separation. Pick this tool here, and now we just draw in our color separation line. And this would be a shadow area. It could be a highlight area. You could have multiple color separation areas. Again, we can add internal details if we want. If you look at those beautiful explosions they would do on the old Bugs Bunny cartoons, there's a lot of churn in there. So now we switch that off. If we switch off the effects layer here, we have our color set line, which we can keep as a line or we can just use it to, as an ink, as an invisible ink line. And we can take the opacity down if we want it to look more subtle. Let's say we want to paint this or color it. We make a new layer here, just call it white. And again, this layer should have its own uh, timeline. So we select these and go there. And now we hit the L for the L tool, for the lasso tool, which is down here if that shortcut doesn't work for you. And you can paint it in by just using it as you would in any other program. They all have the same basic functionality. This is one way of doing it. If you're uh, under a, a deadline, then hit 
this magic wand tool, go to the cleanup layer and select outside of that. And now we have the crawling ant selecting this entire area here. We go select, invert selection. Now we're only selecting this. Now we go select, shrink selection. And I think about two pixels is good for this one. Depends on the size of your drawing and your line. And so back on the white layer, we use this fill tool here and we select, make sure opacity is up to 100 and we paint in there, that's it. Now we have our white layer, let me switch them off. White layer, cleanup layer, color set layer, which for some reason, oh, there we go. I'm not seeing it, where did you go? Oh, it's on the wrong, uh, it's on the one wrong drawing, it went to the drawing zero, so let me click it and drag to there and now we have it back. Weird, but it, here we go. Just be aware of that, occasionally something will slip. You might not want to do my trick with the clip one, clip zero, but uh, I much prefer to keep it like this. So what I'm going to do here is just draw through or the process for one of these images. And so the other thing I want to do is make a group for these. So we click on here and go add group layer. For some reason, the cleanup got locked by mistake. So let's unclick that and click on the group and go smoke front because we're looking at the smoke proof front on. Select the cleanup layer and we can control or command click or we can shift click to get all a big stack drag them into the group layer and now we can switch this on and off with one click um, i'm going to switch the fx off there so now we're here now if we want to change the color of this uh, white layer um, this will apply to the entire timeline we simply click here right click layer style color overlay and let's say we want uh, normal easy blend mode and we just want to make it gray grayish that'll do it okay okay and now we have a gray cloud and all any white layer on here will now be gray and again we need to make sure that we have the animated frames all set through here to get into that habit oh and again i've moved that to the zero frame let's drag it to there that's annoying another way of doing it much more um, advanced really uh, and powerful is make a new layer and this time on this new paint layer we'll call this one a smoke color and let's pick the color that we want say something like this back to the brush tool and just a big nice brush here and now as I, as I paint, I'm going to paint the entire brush around the smoke. And of course, it's not filling to the edge. That's because we need to activate this little alpha here. Bingo. Done. That's how easy it is. And the beauty of this is we can make more of these. So let's say you want a, the shadow layer now. You can start painting there. And again, it's bleeding off the edge. So we need to click on the little mask. And now you can use that color separation as basically an ink line that will allow you to go right up to the edge of the area that you want to color. And we can keep that line if you like it. Uh, we can also switch it off later and see what that looks like, depending on how blobby my color strokes are. They're probably fairly crude by themselves. And the other thing that you can do if you're worried about being too precise is again, get the lasso tool. And if you do it like this, you're gonna get a really sharp set line. Now we can compare them. So we can switch off the color set line and that's what it's going to look like by itself. It's starting to get a very nice kind of feel to it. Let's get rid of the rough area. And we can take any of these down in opacity. Like we can get rid of them. We can keep them. And at this point you might think, yeah, that, that cleanup line that he did was looking good a while ago. But it's starting to look a little bit like weak now with the color on it. So, you know, we might want to do like a like another pass on it. Pick a higher opacity. That's looking better. So before I would do like a whole ton of these, I would test one frame right the way through and then go, right, I like the way this one drawing looks with this brush tool. And now I'm, I'm confident that I can go and apply it to everything. Else. And the other thing that we can do as well to any of these layers, we can right click on smoke color, layer style, color overlay, and we can change this too. So we can make this one, let's say green. So it's like a toxic cloud. Let's see if that works. Oh, it didn't take. This happens with critters sometimes, no matter how careful I am. Normal green color overlay. There we go. And now we have this paint layer. So we can make that an opacity. So see, it looks like a shadow layer. So that's kind of cool. So these are the kind of digital link paint tools that you're going to have at your disposal when you're working with Krita. I really like it. I, it's just, it comes really naturally. And if you're wondering about all the shortcuts and everything, again, I have previous movies, which I'll link in the notes below, how I've set up the brushes, keyboard shortcuts, and all the rest of it. Can't recommend it enough. And I really love this thing. And I'll open the previous one that I did earlier. So this is a bit more time spent on it. Poof, 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 poof. And I am fairly happy with it. I think it came out okay. I'm not going to do a diagnostic in this movie because that's a separate topic. Um, what I am going to do 
I started a Patreon and I've been trying to figure out what would be good to give Patreons that's worth like an extra five or ten a month from me. What I'm going to do is do a beauty pass on it in the next movie. And then I'll put the final files, the KRA files and an image sequence uh, on the Patreon. Uh, you can download those files and they will have a, create a copyright on them that will allow you to use this file in your own project if you have a computer game or any other project you want to use them the only commercial or non-commercial is fine and the only thing is a credit that's all so that'll be in the notes as well and if i zoom out actually uh, it has a nice little classic 1940s poof 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 sense it's like it's coming out of the back of an engine or something you can rotate this and modify it i'm going to show you a couple of spots that i'm kind of unhappy with and i'm going to fix them uh, and show you how we're getting away with some cheats here too I recommend you like and subscribe. I really appreciate that because it helps a lot. Trying to hack through the the ALGO is not easy. And uh, the Patreon ha was going to have and has already some stuff on it. And like I said, there'll be dedicated movies on there. And I think I'll be putting some sort of behind the scenes kind of memories of working at the Booth Studio. Nothing too scandalous, but just fun stuff that I don't want to put on YouTube. And uh, that's about it. So sign up, join and help me buy cat food for the angry cats in the background. Cheers, see you next time.